this might come as a bit of a surprise to some people, but I've never been very good at people telling me what to do. When I was five or so, I was asked to leave the first school that I ever went to. Not quite sure why, well, I do kind of know why. And then when I got my first ever kind of proper job, not like part-time stuff that you do through college, but proper job paying proper money, I walked out of it with no notice whatsoever because the boss was a bit of a, that doesn't mean it's a good thing to just walk out of your job, kids. Don't follow that pattern of life. It's not good. I only ever properly walked out of one job and that was well deserved. I might tell you the background of that. At some other time, not today. If history repeated itself, I would do exactly the same thing. This is future me and I just want to interject for a second. By walking out of a job, I mean literally walking out of a job with zero notice and just walking off. Handing your notice in and working out your notice period and doing some sort of handover and not burning your bridges. One of my top tips for self-employment ever is perfectly okay. I'm very much a believer that you should respect your fellow human being and your colleagues and your friends and people who work for you or people you work for. And at the point where that line gets crossed, generally, I'm out of there. Wix, flexible border log roll with a 15 year anti-rot guarantee. Uh-uh, five years, all rotten. So I guess that's probably why I've been self-employed for most of my adult life. Because being told to do something by a faceless conglomerate to make very, very rich people even richer has never really sat very well with me. And I'm also a great believer in if you're not enjoying a job to the point that you feel that you can't be proud of the work that you're doing anymore, then it's time to move on and give someone else a chance because if everyone had pride in their work, the world would be a much better place. And one of my major reasons for leaving corporate world in the first place was to get away from these faceless conglomerates, which do my head in, and to spend more time with my family. And if I have to take a wage cut to do that, then so be it. Life's too short not to do that. I'll survive without massive tellies and all the things that we consider necessary these days to live. I'll happily sacrifice that at least for the next five to 10 years while my kids are little and I want to spend as much time with them as possible. That's like a normal thing that uh, a mum and dad want to do. So YouTube's a, a funny thing. You might not be aware, but I started YouTube. I mean, the Gosseth Handyman channel's been going for a couple of years now. And I've made coming on for 160 videos on that channel, this channel. But you might not be aware that I've been on YouTube for seven years now. My first ever video was a slightly cheesy drum cover of, I think, Ready Made by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I was just kind of finding my way on YouTube and working out what I could potentially use the platform for. I love making videos. I love teaching people. And I think I'm good at teaching people. And YouTube's just an amazing outlet for all of that. But here's where I am with YouTube at the minute. 
And I know everyone's whinging on about YouTube at the minute, and no one's ever whinged on about YouTube before. But I do think YouTube's in a different place right now because it's really a consumer level thing now. So back in October last year, about 10 months ago, this channel had 2,000 subscribers or thereabouts. And I was very excited about that, don't get it wrong. 2,000 subscribers is awesome. And every single person who subscribes to this channel and follows what I do, and even if you're not subscribed but you still enjoy the videos, you are wonderful, wonderful people. And I love hearing from you in the comments. I love replying to the questions that you ask when I get time, although it is becoming a bit challenging these days. And now I have over 20,000 subscribers. So the channel has grown tenfold in about 10 months, which is just amazing and something I never ever expected would happen. I think my original target for this entire year was to get to 5,000 and uh, we're at 20,000, which is brilliant. Now, I need to be careful what I say here because I am under NDA with AdSense and Google, so I can't tell you certain bits of information that I want to tell you, so I need to tread a little bit carefully. But I can tell you that the testing video that I did where I was testing uh, MDF screws into the face grain of MDF, that video took two days to make. That video for the two days of work made 13 pounds and 17 pence. Which by anyone's standards isn't a great return on investment. And I'm not looking to get rich from doing this channel, but if I'm spending two days for each video to do two, day, uh, two videos a week, Four days of work to make £26 doesn't, it's just not doable. And meanwhile, I'm making a lot of money for a very rich company, a very rich conglomerate. So again, and back in October last year, 10 months ago-ish, my channel had had 347,000 views, which is pretty good. I was happy with that. In the last 10 months, that's built up to 2.7 million views, which is just slightly breathtaking, very humbling and, am and amazing. But the problem is, is that while the channel has grown tenfold and uh, the views have grown almost tenfold, the revenue the channel is generating through AdSense has been steadily dropping. There's been a, a trend of the revenue just going down and down and down. And I'm making less money now than I was in October last year. And that's a problem because I'm a great believer and I always put this across to people in my business related videos and on the podcast and all that. You've got to know your numbers. And I've always had a fairly basic standpoint on things that if the graph is going down, then get out of it. Because it's not a sustainable business model. At least if it was going up even slightly, we could maybe prove that the things that could be done. But at the moment, YouTube isn't promoting these sort of channels. It doesn't want you to watch these sort of channels because YouTube make a lot more money out of cats and cucumbers and viral content. You could argue that everyone likes watching a cat jump when it sees a cucumber, but I don't want my entire TV viewing experience to be viral, pretty much 100% awful content. But that's what YouTube promotes because the algorithm is set up to promote videos that will make YouTube the most money. 
And a lot of that is derived through the watch time of the video. And generally, the more watch time, the better, because it means that they can put more adverts against your videos and YouTube make more money, which is fine. But what the algorithm does is that it looks at all the content that people are watching and because the vast majority of people, sorry to all the makers out there, but we're a very small proportion of the viewing audience of, of YouTube. And although there might be a whole wide world of um, potential viewers out there who might like this sort of content of watching people make stuff, YouTube isn't promoting stuff to that audience because YouTube is promoting the, the viral stuff that will make them more money. Anyway, the point is, is that the YouTube algorithm sucks, especially for smaller channels. Well, I'm saying for smaller channels, no, that's not correct because bigger channels, big maker channels, are having exactly the same problem. Declining viewer numbers over the last year or so. They've had steady growth and then over the last year, it's just gone down the toilet. This is a real shame and I've raised it with YouTube, or I've tried to raise it with YouTube, but believe it or not, for a channel where I'm spending four days a week making content and have 2.7 million views, I can't contact YouTube in any which way, shape or form. I can't, even if my channel went completely offline, I can't re even raise a support query with YouTube. So, it kind of leaves me in a bit of a tricky situation because I love making content. I love making videos. I love putting out stuff there that will potentially help people or get them inspired to make something or get into this industry, which has a massive skills shortage at the minute. But I can't spend four days a week making videos for 13 pounds per video. And Patreon's awesome. And all the Patreon support that I get is amazing. And if anything, I'm gonna be putting more content out on Patreon. I'm just generally noticing that my favorite creators that I used to watch all the time have stopped making videos. Samurai Carpenter, Steve Ramsey, and the people who are still making videos are churning them out in the hope that they can actually start making money because they're being told, oh, you need to make more content. And it's bullshit. What YouTube are doing is using creators to line their pockets and to pay those creators as little as feasibly possible and I kind of feel that that's what the algorithm's doing. It's kind of pushing things to the point of how much can we get away with forcing people to create more and more content before the creators just say, I'm not doing it anymore. And that's what we're starting to see. And that's why creators are dropping off the platform. And for anyone thinking of trying to get into YouTube at the minute, sorry, but forget it. <laughs> And I know there will be people who tell you otherwise, but honestly, I've watched amazing channels putting out consistent content and they're not growing at all because the algorithm's not promoting their channel because it's not in the interest of the algorithm because it's never gonna make money for YouTube if you've only got 500 subscribers, is it? I mean, common sense. If you've got an algorithm that is programmed to make, as I just got an electric shock from that, if you've got an algorithm that's programmed to make money for the conglomerate, why would it promote a channel with less than 500 subscribers? It's never gonna make any money for the channel. Apart from anything else, you wouldn't even be monetized, so it wouldn't make them any money anyway. And I'm kind of not having a go at YouTube either because no matter what they do, people complain. If the creators don't get paid enough, the creators complain. But if you have unskippable adverts, and let's face it, no advertiser in the world wants people to skip their advert. What's the point in a skippable advert? 
and then everyone whinges on, oh, you can't possibly have skippable adverts. But how do you plan on the platform paying for itself without advertising if people can skip the adverts? Which, what advertiser is going to pay for an advert that you can just press a skip button on? Come on. Put yourself in the real world for a second. <laughs> I quite like these new kind of five second unskippable ads. It would help if the advertisers also had a clue of how to use the system because the amount of times I get adverts for things that bear no relevance to me whatsoever. But again, that's not YouTube's fault. YouTube have given the advertisers the tools of how to make this work for them. If the advertisers don't use the tools properly and just present their adverts globally to absolutely everyone and hope for the best, you might as well just buy billboard advertising. But my big problem at the minute is that making two videos a week and the whole moving to a consistent two videos a week model, it was a little bit of an experiment. And to be fair, it has increased the um, viewer numbers on my channel and it's increased the subscriber count on my channel. and. The revenue has very, very slightly gone up, but nowhere near enough to justify the amount of time it takes me to make one video. So, and this is a problem, and I can't make the sort of videos that I want to make quickly. It's just not doable. I've got people leaving comments left, right, and center that on my testing videos, they want me to do a minimum of three tests per test to draw an average, if that makes sense. So for example, on the MDF screw test, so it would mean running the test 24 times. God damn it, talks. So, here's what I'm gonna do. In terms of Gosforth Handyman versus the YouTube algorithm. And it's not even a person. It's a freaking computer telling me to do two videos a week or more. I am no longer going to be a slave to the YouTube algorithm. And I will put content out when I'm good and ready to put content out. I will continue to do Test Tuesday videos, but it might not be every Tuesday. If it takes me a longer amount of time to do the test, it might take me a week to make the video, but at least it's going to be a video that I'm proud of rather than churning out two videos a week to keep the algorithm happy when I'm not particularly happy myself with the videos, but I haven't physically got time to make them any better. So I'm not doing it anymore. The YouTube algorithm can stick it up its shiny metal. There's many, many other things that I could be doing on this channel and on other channels, because bear in mind, this isn't my only channel, but none of the other ones make any money either. So it applies to all of them. But gone are the days where you could just make money from AdSense, unless you're absolutely churning out the content. And to do that, you have to be doing it full time. And I can't do this full time because it makes, it barely makes enough to pay for the hard drive storage space it takes to store all the blinking videos. Five hundred and twelve meg RAM sticks. I don't think anyone will want them. So, Test Tuesday will continue, but it will no longer be weekly. Because if I'm going to do these tests, I want to do them properly, and I haven't got time to do them properly churning out two videos a week. Saturday videos and the tips, got with Handyman Tips Library. All of that will continue, but it will no longer be weekly. The videos will take as long as the videos take and the algorithm can shove it. Because if I'm not putting out content that I'm proud of and that I'm happy with, I might as well not be doing it at all. I will be focusing more on Patreon. Because Patreon folk very kindly pay to watch my content. So 
If you want to see stuff on Patreon, for a dollar a month, you get access to all of that. So I will be focusing on that more and putting out more content on Patreon, including pricing videos uh, and just other general content. I will be making a sustained effort to put more out on that platform. Because it's a much more sustainable model than YouTube is right now. I will be focusing more on the website as well and putting more content out on there because there's loads of stuff I want to do on the website but I haven't got time because I'm making two videos a week. You might have noticed that since switching to a sustained two videos a week my blog articles on the website have basically stopped because I haven't got time to write blog articles and make two videos a week. And Believe it or not, I'm setting up another YouTube channel for all the business tips and whatnot that I've got on my Andy Mac Drums channel at the minute. I've finally set up a new channel for that, which I've been meaning to get round to for about the last two years. That's a whole other story, by the way. Check it out. This is my motor for the test jig. I don't know if you can see it. I'm not refocusing the camera, but I'm hoping that'll have enough torque. I need to build a motor for my test jig. When am I going to do that? Oh, the small business channel is called Small Business Toolbox. It might not show up yet because there's no content on it, but it will have. If you do manage to find it, I'll pop a link in the description. Uh, feel free to subscribe. But that's another thing that I need to do, is get content onto that channel. And I can't do that while well, making two videos a week. And above everything, above absolutely every other thing going on in life, and believe me, the YouTube algorithm is like below floor level in terms of things that I care about. I care about you, my YouTube community and people who watch this channel, but YouTube doesn't give a monkeys about that. Or certainly the YouTube algorithm doesn't give a monkeys about that. But my top, my number one priority, especially at the minute, is my family. You know, my daughter's eight, nearly nine. My son's 12, nearly 13. I've got maximum five years before my son's gonna be off doing his own thing and potentially going to college or university or whatever he wants to do. And we don't have that family unit as it was anymore. And we've got that five year window where we can do things as the, the four of us. And that, at the minute, is passing every day like that, so quickly. So how am I gonna feel in five years time when my son's buggered off? And I say to myself, oh, my son's left home, I never got a chance to do this, and I never got a chance to fly his radio controlled plane with him, and uh, I never got a chance to do making in the workshop with my daughter and I never got a chance to because I've been feeding a, a, an algorithm that isn't even a human thing it's like have it's like the worst of all worlds it's getting paid next to nothing for a boss that isn't even real so it's time to reprioritize and it's time to shake things up a bit on this channel um, and as I say, I'm not going anywhere. The channel's not shutting down or anything like that. But I'm not gonna be a slave to the YouTube algorithm anymore. It can shove it. And if I've got weeks where I've got time to put out two videos a week, and ironically, this might end up being one of those weeks. If I've got time to do two videos, I will do two videos, but if I haven't, so be it. Such is life. Tough. There's better things to worry about. There really is. Nothing will take priority over my family. So sorry YouTube. If that doesn't work out for you, well, I think it's your business model that needs to take a good hard long look at itself. Because at the minute you've got creators 
burning themselves out, desperately trying to put con enough content out there to make ends meet, while Alphabet or Google as a company continues to become one of the richest companies on the planet. So that's where we are and I feel a lot happier for getting that off my chest so thank you. It's future me again. I don't want this to come across as like the whingiest, moaniest video that I've ever made because that's not the intention of this video. This video has two purposes. One is if you watch on a Tuesday or Saturday and notice one of my videos aren't there as expected, then it's nothing to worry about and it's just because I'm making a better video. I want to make better videos and if that takes longer, so be it. The second point that I wanted to get across is don't be afraid to change things if things aren't working out. And just remember, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. You're still here. It's over. Go home. Go.